Hey, hello truckers, and welcome back to American Truck Simulator with Realistic Economy. We are in Steamboat, Colorado, and my trailer is back there somewhere, because yeah, it's still dark at 6 o'clock in the morning with this winter mod that we got rolling. Speaking of rolling, hopefully I can find the trailer. No, I missed it. I know I missed it when I was backing up. You see, it wasn't quite lined up. See if I can get it this time. You think there'd be backup lights on the truck? There might be, uh, but I don't know where where that button might be. Let's hitch on up to our trailer. So it's been a while since we've been in the realistic economy uh, ATS profile. Anyways, I've been doing a lot of the Christmas deliveries. Got them all. Well, I don't say I got them all done. I did uh, my 15 and then some. And we are doing one today as well because I was trying to look for Lowe's out of here just on regular cargo and nothing fit my style so went to external contracts and we are rolling with this one only 25 miles an hour through here must be uh, where are we going we are going to Selena Utah that's where we're going and we got to get there in the next 13 hours or actually 14 hours uh, that's real time so I got to get it done this episode basically and it should not be an issue so he says Every time I say that, we run into some problems here. Let's go ahead and get that off the screen. We don't need that on there. I did top off the diesel tank with some fuel this morning because apparently when we parked in Steamboat, we just parked somewhere and said, good enough. But I went right past a fuel station this morning, so topped it off with some diesel fuel. Uh, this will be my first ride in version 1.3, 1.43 on this profile. So, one thing I'm noticing right away, the engine noise in the cab is louder. Um, the steering wheel feedback seems to be a little bit more noticeable. So, little things here and there. So, in case you were have not seen my last, well, maybe my Christmas special uh, that I ran, or the last episode of ATS Realistic Economy, we are running the Frosty Mod from Grimm's. And I will try to remember put the link in the description below. And of course, the mod is now available for 1.43. So that's why there's snow everywhere. I got the heavy snow as well. I did turn off the physics just because, yeah, the braking, I'm not a big fan of the braking physics on that. So, uh, but to each his own. I, I mean, just because I don't like it doesn't mean that, you know, everyone else should not like it. I mean, you, you might, may like it. Uh, it just seems like it takes a long time to stop. Extremely long time to stop. So. Uh, I don't want to be causing accidents, accidents, especially when we're trying to collect some cash. And speaking of cash, you may have noticed that we're up to $116,000 now in the bank account after sleeping through the night. I went to bed last night with about $107,000. So the drivers did pretty well overnight. Uh, while I'm actually talking about money, I know someone left a comment on an older video saying, I cannot have my drivers just have day cabs. They will not drive long distances, and that is not true. We have seen my drivers go from Denver all the way to North Carolina. So, yeah, I'm not too sure um, where they were getting that from, or unless I'm just lucky where my day cab drivers are driving 2,000 miles across the country. Who knows? Who knows? I didn't even see how much I was getting paid for this delivery. How much am I getting paid for this delivery? $2,600 for... A journey that's going to bring me 400 miles. But it's going to take me all day to get there, pretty much. Well, right now it says I'm going to get there at 2 o'clock-ish in the afternoon. We shall see. I was trying to find a regular job, if you will, but everything out of Steamboat was just, you know, not, not to my liking at all. Uh, does this weigh as much as I think it does? Yeah, 43. So it's not, it's not that heavy. It's heavy, but it's not that heavy. So we're getting pretty close to being able to buy another truck and hire another driver. Uh, that'll be kind of good because that just means more money coming in and then we'll start saving up for uh, swapping in this truck for whatever it might be. I did try on my other profile the 2022 Freightliner Cascadia and uh, it's just the updated version of the Cascadia I guess. I, you know, not driving the Cascadia enough. I, didn't know what changes were there. Uh, if you're a Freightliner lover, 
you're probably slapping me in the face right now about it, but um, yeah, so it's not like it's a, to me, it's not like a desired truck, like, oh, it's completely new or whatever. I just didn't see that much of a difference in it. Uh, but, you know, if you know what all the differences were, let me know anyways, or let everyone else know in the comments below. But yeah, we're trying to save up money. Like I said, it looks like another 12 grand and we'll be able to get ourselves another truck and another driver in the fleet. And then, of course, like I said, we'll save up for our truck. And then after that, uh, save up some more money to upgrade a garage because all of our garage slots will be taken. So we'll have to upgrade a garage before we can hire more drivers. I don't see myself getting more garages anytime soon. We'll just be upgrading the other garages that we currently have along the way while we're paying off our debt that we currently have. But by then, you know, like I said, the longer we go, the more uh, higher rating our drivers get, the more money they bring in. And of course, we'll keep on trucking like we have been always. Also, it was kind of good when I got to my other profile, I did, did a little bit of research. And I found out um, the Volvo truck from Air... Uh, yeah, I even forgot the, what his name is. Uh, Aradeth? Aradeth? The Volvo truck that he uh, was modding. It is now being modded by DirectX, I do believe. And he has modded it, or they have modded it, um, rather well. So it is usable, for sure. The only thing I wish it had was the old seven, the, the, the D16 750 horsepower engine. But I haven't been able to really... I didn't look too hard for it, I'll just put it that way. Uh, I found a couple mods that were D16 Volvo engines, but it doesn't have the 750 horsepower option into it. But we won't be using that mod in this series here, because we've already done the Volvo truck. And someone in our, in our fleet is driving that Volvo truck. So if we do get done today at 2, I'm probably just going to call it, because honestly my... My voice is uh, kind of killing me because, well, it's, uh, it's been the holiday season, so yeah, you can imagine. Hopefully everyone's had a safe and happy holiday so far. Uh, as you're watching this, it's, well, it should be January 2nd, I do believe I'll put this video out. So, a happy new year to everyone out there. Like I said, hopefully everyone had a nice, safe, happy holidays. And may the new year bring you a better year than the last year, no matter how bad or good it was. As long as the new year is always better than the previous year, that's what we always kind of shoot for, right? It's kind of interesting why these cars are parked over there. Do you guys have a little bumper-to-bumper -bumper problem? Looks like you did. This might be the last episode I run the winter mod. At least for now. You can always turn it back on. I may try one of his other mods that does... He has mods as well for fall, summer, that kind of stuff. Uh, the mods, he does have them for ETS 2 as well. So when you go to the link, just make sure if you're playing ATS or ETS, you download the correct mod for ETS or ATS or vice versa. So with the money I bring in today, but we got to remember our loan payment is right around six grand, so that's going to take a big chunk out of our butt. But you know, it won't be this episode. Maybe, possibly next episode. Depends on what our drivers do. That we could be hiring and buying another truck. It'll be a Freightliner, uh, but we—I don't want to say we buy the cheapest ones, but we pretty much get close to doing that. Um, I would like to do a test, though. Maybe after we upgrade our truck to save a little bit of cash and upgrade one of our driver's trucks. Because someone did tell me that if I upgrade one of the trucks to a better engine, better chassis, where they can take heavier, bigger loads, that actually does matter. So I might try to do a little test. Find a driver that's got uh, how much money they're bringing in per mile and upgrade the truck and see if uh, their, their dollar per mile goes up. Because usually if you upgrade the truck, that means bigger, better loads and better pay. So, yeah, we kind of do a little test that way. But it will be rather expensive to upgrade a truck. As we all know, like the baseline trucks, you can get for like 125000 But if you get, you know, one with the best chassis, best, well, I don't say best chassis, uh, you know, bigger chassis, bigger engine, better transmission. Yeah, you're talking trucks that are 225 250 in that price range. 
So I headed back towards Utah, like I said. Uh, Selene? Selena? Selena. And we're kind of going this way because someone did have a request to kind of uh, go through Reno. So we're going to try to find our way to get back towards Reno, which is pretty much on the Nevada-California border. Oh, border? Uh, border. <laughs> so we're going to kind of head that way and try to roll, uh, either get a job to Reno or roll through Reno as we get there. I've been trying to remember, have I been to Reno? And the only way I'll know, I just realized, is to go on the map and I can see if we've been there on this profile. Yeah, it was very weird doing all the Christmas deliveries on my other profile or doing the Christmas video that I did on my other profile because I got the same minimal visor screen at the bottom and just seeing the totals the drivers were bringing in, it's like... <laughs> that driver just brought enough cash to almost go out and buy another brand new truck. Ah, I haven't been to Wrangley. I don't know if Frank. I think we're in Utah now. I do like this snowy mod just because it changes up the scenery quite a bit. I know I've talked about this in the last couple episodes since I've used this mod, but it would be kind of interesting if SCS could bring along seasons in ATS to where, you know, you get up in the higher elevations, you got snow on the ground, or, you know, just always be snow up there. That way, if you want to, if you get tired of seeing green grass everywhere, you can just, you know, drive somewhere and uh, drive where there's snow. I did that, um, did that ETS 2 as well when Pro Mods had it to where we drove up to, could we go to Greenland? I'm, of course, I went way back to like 2015. Um, because I drove a lot of ETS before ATS, when ATS came along, then I, of course, teleported over here. Uh, but back then, yeah, I had Pro Mods, and I think we went to, you could drive, up to, well, not drive up to Greenland, but you take, you take a boat up to Greenland and drive around, and at first you're, you know, just regular driving as normally would, but as you start driving more inland, you hit the snow, and it was slippery stuff. So they can kind of do that here, you know, put snow up in the Rockies, on the mountains as you go up and over. I don't know if we'll ever get that far, but I mean, maybe someday. This game has made a lot of improvements through the years. Yeah, so definitely a lot more noise in version 1.43 with the cab noise. Get more of the rumbling sound inside the cab itself. I'll have to see when I edit this video how loud the cab is over my voice. And I'll have to adjust accordingly. Being my first time actually recording as I'm talking, I guess. I did a little talk in the, in the uh, Christmas video, but not a lot. So I haven't uh, had a chance really to stop at a workshop, if you will, to put the Christmas lights on the truck. But I had a quick look on my other profile with some cabs with the lights on. And it really is not my style at all. But, like I said, to each his own. And a lot, a lot of you maybe already have the lights on your truck and you like it. But uh, for me, not so much. Gonna slow us down to 25 miles an hour going uphill on a snowy slope. Not the best idea is I might have to get out and throw the chains on the truck if I slow down too much. Would be kind of cool to get a couple more deliveries here in the next hour or so. See if we can get that money up to 120000 only for a little while before our loan payment comes on out. So if you're kind of new to the series, we kind of owe about, I'm going to say $1.7, $1.8 million back to the bank. I could actually probably take out another loan, but we are not going to be taking out any more loans. We're but our company is making the cash. It's not a problem. But that's the whole point of realistic economy is kind of kind of there to knock down how much you are supposed to make. Make it a little bit more challenging. 
it seemed really challenging in the first dozen or so episodes. It's like, wow, this is going to be it's going to be difficult to do this. But as we got rolling, it's not that bad. Just cruising on down to the S turns here, which every trucker would love. And just recently where I live, um, on Christmas Day we had a lot of freezing rain around here. And a couple days later we had more freezing rain. And on that day I actually saw an 18-wheeler in a river, did not quite make a corner. And he actually went up and over the guardrail because the snow banks were kind of like right here where the snow banks were like that high. And they were actually up and over the, the guardrails. So kind of just acted like a ramp, went up and over and tipped over into the river. And I know when I went by they had about maybe three or four tow trucks there trying to get it upright. Not It's not a deep river. So, you know, the river is maybe a couple feet deep. And I will say, I do know the driver was okay. At least I, that's what I got told. And it's in the area where probably doing about maybe 35, 40 miles an hour. Black ice, you gotta love that stuff. Now I just gotta remember back in this profile because I've been doing so I did so many Christmas deliveries. And I probably should show you the the ones that I'll show you a nice little route. If you haven't done the Christmas presents yet and you want to get all 15 done, I can show you a route uh, that does it rather easily. If you take three hours of your <laughs> of your time, real time, you can get all 15 deliveries done. I think this goes on through July. Yeah, July. Wow. It goes through July. You got plenty of time to get it done. Uh, it goes through January 8th. But if you can get yourself to Nevada, that's where you need to kind of go. Uh, the, dirt, the journey is about 120 miles or so, back and forth, from one town to another. And basically, um, every time I went to external contracts, there was uh, one going right back where I came from. And I get, I go there, and then I go right back to where I came from. Just kept going back and forth. And the, there was always uh, Christmas presents to deliver back and forth to, the, to those towns. So it worked out rather well. well there's our loan payment knocking us down to 114000 but that's all right. I mean, at the end of the day, every time we end the day, the, the bank account is always higher than it was the previous day. Yes, yeah, so this journey is going to be just about right because now we're scheduled to get there about quarter of three in the afternoon. Well, now that we're going to be getting on a highway, it looks like, probably chewing the sun at that time a little bit. Hey, we the green light on the way station. Always like that. Now, I actually have the rain possibility knocked up to about 75% because I wanted it to snow. And slept to the night, woke up, and it's not snowing. Imagine that. That 75% chance is probably going to snow, and it's not snowing. If you want to see what it does, if it doesn't snow by the end, it looks like it's not going to. But in my Christmas video, I knocked up the chance of rain up to 100%, and that's what made it snow all throughout that video. Oh, now we're getting into Utah. Oh, I thought we, I thought this whole time I said, geez, I'm not that far from Utah. We must have been in it by now. Nope. Welcome to Utah. We're on the I-70. Westbound. And a beautiful sunny day. Which, when there's snow on the ground like this, it makes it really, really bright outside.
Yeah, so after we get to Selena and call the day, like I said, next episode, we'll be working our way towards Reno. Maybe we'll find a load going there or not, I'm not too sure. But we'll pass on through. Right now I'm in one of those moments to where I feel like I got a sneeze and I'm not sneezing. <laughs> and that's going to bug me until I actually do sneeze. Both I can hold off until the end of the episode. We only got 140 miles to go. Getting the Christmas presents delivered. And when you reach the 15 Christmas, uh, Christmas presents to deliver, just keep on delivering because as a community, if we, hit, if we top off the cities delivering presents to all the cities, uh, we get a community goal, I do believe. So we'll have ornaments for inside the cab, but you know, I kind of like Odie and Garfield over there. Still got those Idaho potato chip bowl over there that Cindy likes to nibble on once in a while. Yeah, if I had the physics mod on right now, I would not want to drive this close to any vehicle in front of us, especially a cop car, because they they slow down like normal, and I would we would just slide on forever. I don't mind sliding with the snowy physics mod on, just that that just seems a little bit too extreme, as far as I'm concerned. And it only seemed to really show up when you're hitting the brakes. Uh, going around corners only once or twice I thought I felt it but it could have been my imagination doing so because you're trying to feel for something that may or may not be there uh, Salt Lake City our home our one truck garage where every time the game updates I teleport back to that one truck garage and it's like, this is where it all started, and yeah, it's still the same, but everywhere else is slowly growing. Selena 134 it says and I got 104 miles to go so I guess I'm not quite going to town uh oh car accident up ahead I'm not going to be one of those nice drivers to let people in Probably should put my hazard lights on there, but I don't know what key binding that is currently. Uh, where am I going? I know I'm going to Selena. John Deere is where we're going. John Deere needs some Christmas presents to, to deliver to all the farming kids. here. Just a cautious truck driver it seems like. Or either that, he's got too big of a load for the chassis design he has going. Of course now that killed our momentum going uphill as well. And what a hill this is. But the good old Mac engine, I think we got a 610 or 625 horsepower Mac engine in here. Ooh, someone just brought in three grand. We're going to bring in two point something, 
So that's going to put us over 120 for the day. I kind of like that. Uh, is that trucker going to let that trucker in? Is he going to stop? Let him in? Yeah, kind of. I was getting ready to go out there, but that car is coming along rather quickly. Traffic on the I-70 westbound today is a little cluttered. We'll just call it holiday traffic again, I guess. I may actually give the, uh, the fall mod a, a good look. See all the colors in the trees. You got another accident up here? Are you kidding me? I turned up the weather. I wonder if I accidentally turned up. Well, plane crash. That's a new one. For me, anyways. I wonder if I accidentally turned up the accidental uh, chances higher rather than the rain, because it seems like uh, we're, we're have not having our luck. Well, we're having our luck today. Kind of finding them, I guess. Ooh, some more money coming in. Not only that, they're leveling up. It's like a double bonus. Alright, 42 miles out, so we are just about there. And I have to remind myself to show you, if you're playing an ATS, if you want to get your deliveries done. The one thing I, I, I try to read on the Christmas deliveries, it doesn't seem like there's a set distance you have to go. It sounds like the minimum distance has to be 100 miles or anything. But, yeah, the, the route I took was rather nice. Like I said, I knocked out those, once I found that route, it's like, oh, I'm just going back and forth here. And basically, uh, I'm getting, I was getting delivery done every 10 minutes. get out and go around the bus, but I realize my exit's got to be coming up rather soon since we're only 20 miles out. So I don't want to be that guy that rushes past someone, get in front of them, then uh, gets off the interstate and has to brake check them. Now the one thing you probably know if you've been following with the series, the other thing this winter mod does it also changes the time of sunrise and sunset because usually without the mod at 6 a.m. it's rather bright out but as you saw this morning at 6 a.m. it was completely dark which means it also gets darker earlier as well as you would think it would do in the winter time so uh, I forgot what time it actually gets dark and this is our exit right here Yeah, if I had the physics mod on going this fast, downhill and braking, I may not have stopped in time, so. And I don't need to be getting into accidents everywhere. I do that well enough sometimes without the mod. I don't know if there's a turning lane here. Yes, it is. I can see it now. Double checks. I don't know if anyone's actually got a stoplight there. Kind of a weird intersection. I feel like I've been down this road before. Looks familiar. 
I'm kind of looking for an area where we can call it at night as well, but I'm not seeing no rest area anywhere here currently. Open up, please. Thank you. Appreciate it. And where are we going with this beautiful trailer? I figured as much in there. Uh, I need to change this approach for sure. Wait, wait, wait. Is that front end loader's <laughs> forks going through the gate? It certainly is. Oh, I'm in sixth gear. I need to be in second. All right. This is going to be just a little bit tight to begin with. And boy, am I going to be rusty backing up for sure. Yep. You can just call me rusty. My eye on my front. It looks like we are pretty much good to go. This guy's ready to unload the Christmas presents, it looks like. I might be too far. Nope, uh, we're not. We are in. Well, I think I rolled over something on the passenger. Uh, sorry, on the uh, yeah, on the passenger side. Anyways, let's go. Now I'm not in again. All right, let's uh, let's roll on out and get get in here nice and square. Let's go a little bit more over to my side. There we go. Alright, let's uh, park and brake, turn off the engine, decouple. Get us over $120,000 in our bank account, how sweet that is. I got I got something here. Uh, leave no branch. Uh, I, I un unlock something, don't know what. <gasps> we even got up a level. Yay, I got a good point into something here. Um, high value cargo looks like the way we're going right now. We'll put a point into that. And let's see, let's look at the world map. Oh, yeah, but before I forget, let's look at the world map and show you the route I was taking. So, basically, the route I was taking is from Ellie, or Eli, I don't know how that's actually pronounced. Um, but Ellie will bring you over to Tonopah. But you're not actually going all the way into Tonopah, I think you're going to Dole, right here. So, I would always make a delivery to Dole, and there would always be a delivery from Dole back to uh, Ellie. And I'm trying to remember, where did I go in Ellie? Uh, I think I went to Beezer Homes with it. No, I always went to Walmart, sorry. Um, you would deliver to Walmart, and then I think you have to go to Beezer Homes to grab another load to go back to Dole down in Tonopah. So it's going back and forth. Uh, really not much traffic on this road whatsoever. Uh, Speed-wise, you're pretty darn all set to go. And like I said, in three hours, if you were if you're around here or know how to teleport here, just go back and forth. There was always Christmas presents to deliver there. Uh, the other thing I will check for you guys as well. Let's go to external contracts. We can kind of see how the Christmas presents are doing. Uh, no, we're in Selena. So Ellie or Eli still could use a good amount of gifts, like 300 more gifts. And Tonopah only needs 40 more. Uh, so basically, if the community gets so many cities up to a thousand, um, and then that's when uh, if we get so many cities up to a thousand, we get more cabin accessories. I think is what the goal is. So you have until the eighth, is it? Uh, when does it end here? I want to be sure about this. Uh, where are we going here? Scroll on down. Oh, you got until the sixteenth of January. So if you haven't, got, if you know, if you're seeing this video, you still got some time to do so, and uh, you are all set. Uh, I need to work, look back at the world map because I need a place to call it uh, for sleepy sleep tonight. There is a Western Star over here. That's kind of interesting. Uh, I should be able to sleep there 
So let's go ahead and mark that. Uh, is there a gas station or a fuel station nearby? I don't really see one right away, but I think we're good. Uh, let's go ahead and drive and park in a Western Star. So whoever parked that uh, that wheel loader over there did a nice job of getting the logging forks to the gate. Open says me. I said open, thank you. Appreciate it. Crossing the double yellow line, that's a no-no. A little bit of a speeding through here. It's near the end of the day, so I'm excited to get done for the day, get out, stretch my legs. You drive for about seven, eight hours straight. You want to get out and stretch your legs at some point. Uh, there is a turning lane here. Hello, KFC. Uh, what's on the billboard this week? Couldn't quite read it that well. Uh, Western Star. And it should be if I come right on over to here. And this should go ding here. Perfect. Let's stop right there. Turn off the engine, and there we have it. Ending the day at hundred and twenty-two thousand uh, dollars. Since it might be a little, it's a little bit of a short video. Let's go to truck dealers, just so I can see how much cash we actually need. So we got a garage in Denver. Oh, it's international. I thought it was Freightliner. So in the Denver garage, do we have the internationals. Then I would assume, just because that's what I want to keep that uh, going here. Uh, where's garage manager? If we go to Denver. Let's see. Yeah, we got all internationals. We can see we got one slot open. So yes, it is international. Let's just double check to make sure I got the pricing right because it could be next episode that we get ourselves a truck. Uh, buy online. And I don't want to go too cheap on them. International Lone Star Day Cab. Uh, we'll just go here and customize. So yeah, that's fine. Um, we'll give them a six by four. Uh, we usually give them a, a little bit better engine. We'll go from a 400 to a 430 international engine. And that price goes up to 125. So that's kind of roughly what we do. The transmission is a 10 speed. If I give them, if I give them a 12 speed, then the price goes up to 126. So. I don't know. Someone just said, give them, they still won't take loads if their truck analysis will not allow them to. So by giving them a little bit more, they'll be able to take some more heavier loads and, and, and do that and bring a little bit more cash. So, uh, like 130,000 is really what we need. But then again, we got to remind ourselves, we still need $6,000 a day for payments. So that's always fun. Uh, so that could be definitely something we do here pretty soon. Uh, if not next episode, probably the episode after that. And uh, we'll have another driver on the road. Then we start setting up for uh, us trading in this truck right here, which is our Mac. Beautiful truck that we have a nice little wonderful paint job for. Uh, like I said, when we upgrade, or I shouldn't say upgrade, uh, when we swap in this truck for whatever other truck it is, uh, once I know what truck it is, and maybe I'll try to come up with another paint scheme for it, uh, change up the design. I think I over put too much on this truck, honestly, but... Um, Overall, not too bad. I do like the blue flames going across the bottom. That's kind of kind of nice. But uh, either way, anyways, I'm just rambling on now like I do at the end of, end of my videos lately. So <laughs> let's going to wrap this one up. That's going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. I'll catch you again right here at American Truck Simulator with Realistic Economy. But until then, have a good one.